it said at the start of the video that brands are more than the logo and one of the first things it said it's about passion so we should talk about that in the questionnaire later on about your passions when trying to personify your brand and i'll explain that and also talked about cattle and the stamp and belonging too so how do you think that works now how do people use brands now in that sense of belonging to that people want to belong to something because people, the general public generally love brands think about um young well any age let's not be ageist denim's <coughs> jeans call them what you will anyone got a favorite brand of denim's or jeans Chris, would you wear jeans from Tesco or Asda? I heard you laughing. Yeah, I was looking the wrong demographic. <laughs> <laughs> well, my husband would, and he should, he's caused me a fortune. Um, so G-Star, G-Star's his thing. And if they're not G-Star jeans, which I think they're about for the pair. And I keep explaining, you can get a free pair in, uh, next for that. Mm -hmm. Because he's, brand, he's branding himself because he's belonging to a set of people. What do you think it is? How does he feel if he's wearing that brand with his brand associated training shoes? He feels good, right? It makes him feel good. So he likes to belong. So you like that we enjoy using brands in a whole variety and a whole different set of ways. Now, whether it's or not um, about the food that you buy for your children and knowing that maybe that it's organic or that it's local and you're supporting a local business, that makes you feel good. So we like consumers like to belong to brands, but we like our communication to be really easy and clear so that we can identify the brands that we want to belong to and why we want to belong to them. So actually, that's your responsibility to tell consumers why they should want to belong to you. Now, there are lots of ways to work out what your brand should be, and some of them are quite academic, quite boring. Um, so, you know, we can talk about your culture and values, um, that we can talk about your differentiation, I generally start over here with personality because I think it's a really easy thing to do, but you can feedback tonight because that's the exercise that we've been doing and let me know. Um, brand, per, brand's personality is what makes a brand relatable to human beings. It's how we all converse with one another, where we'll say, oh, I love going around to so-and-so's, you know, they're really funny, or um, they're incredibly enthusiastic, or they're very clever, they're very intelligent, they're very insightful. I, I love spending time with Bobby, Bobby's very insightful. And we describe a person and we're attracted to them by the certain traits and also how we look and how they make us feel. How consumers make decisions, and this has been academically researched, but 80% of your decisions are based on how something makes you feel. And that's to some extent why social media works so well because we can hit buttons like like or emojis that do this and we can express how we feel. And in fact, actually, Trying to communicate social media before we added emojis was really quite difficult because like is not the only express, it's not the only way that we feel. And then somebody puts up a post about oh, the dog's down. And you're like, do you hit like? Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite, quite difficult mediums to. So successful brands develop personalities and they speak to us, whether it's through a radio advert, a post on Instagram. Um, to a TV advert or even a magazine, they personify themselves because that's how our brains are wired so that we can relate to them and understand whether or not that's a brand that we would like. And strong brands, big brands, some of them actually don't mind if there's a subset of people that don't like them because maybe they're the wrong customer. I worked with a luxury travel company in the borders called Lloyd and Townsend Rose quite a few years ago. And they would list all of these estates and castles on their websites that you could go to for a week or a weekend and you could hire it. But really what they wanted to sell, it took me a few weeks to find us out from them, was that um, they, could, uh, they, would, they would organise your chauffeur to pick you up from the private jet and there would be a chef and a nanny to look after the kids and all these. And it was an experience they were selling. But what happened was because they got all the properties sort of up front and centre, people like me <laughs> were saying, now, if 10 of us stayed there and we divided that between 10 and you've got a hurry and you've got some more, we could stay in a castle. And that would actually be as much, that would be cheaper than staying in terms. Do you want to go? So the phone rang off the hook. And he said to me, they're the wrong customers. Because I don't want to, you know, they can go straight to the property and rent the property. I am selling services. Now, the problem he had there was he was just put, he put the wrong things on his website. But you can sometimes have the wrong customers. And he actually had to sit me down one day. This was when the penny dropped. He said, so I kept talking about my holidays, he said, no, 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 it's not you. 
35 grand a week we start at. I was like, no, it's not equal. So, right? It's not equal. So we're going to focus on, put a lot of this to the one side, and we're going to focus on developing a brand personality so that we can make your business relatable. And the other reason I think that's important, I'll talk about it in a bit more in depth, is because I think that helps you come up with your content, your marketing message, your colour schemes, your visual imagery, and hopefully tonight, a name, right? 